Hi, my name is Rory Delgleish. I'm the minister of Huxby and Wigginton Methodist Church. And this is the, the video that introduces the third focus for us as we explore a Methodist way of life. Nothing particularly Methodist about it, except that we're focusing that in small group conversation, which is quite Methodist. Really, these are practices, um, habits, ways of, 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 of living out our faith that are part of any, any Christian tradition's life, really, as we think about what it means to follow Jesus, to call ourselves Christian, to, yeah, to ask what it means to be living faithfully today. In a way that's good for us, good for our neighbors, and honors all that God is and is asking of us. So our focus today, as we begin this third focus, is learning and caring. It's one of the one of the four priorities of our church that is bound up in our calling across the Methodist Church of Great Britain. Um, and learning and caring is what we're going to focus on today. We're going to begin in a story. And it's a story in the Bible. It's only in Luke's version of the life of Jesus in chapter 10, <clears throat> right at the end. And it's a very short story of Jesus visiting two sisters in their home, Martha and Mary. But Jesus comes and, and spends time with them. And um, Mary sits at his feet, probably alongside others, listening to what he has to say. Martha, it says in the story, is distracted by all the preparations that need to be done. She's hosting. They're hosting. And so she comes to Jesus at one point and says to him, Master, don't you care? It's quite strong language. Don't you care that I'm left to do all the work and my sister is just not really doing anything? And Jesus responds to her and says, Martha, you're worried and upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. And Mary has chosen what is better and it will not be taken away from her. So that's the story. And... And it gets unpacked in all kinds of different ways. We're going to be spending some time with that story today as we think about what learning and caring looks like in our church because there's some, there's some obvious things to say about it, but there are also some, some hidden treasure, I think, in what, what faithfulness to, to growing in our understanding and, and what faithfulness in, in caring for ourselves and others asks of us. So in each of the commitments we make, or that we, we, we try to hold as, as part of our way of life, um, they're prefaced by those words, with God's help, as far as we are able. Always important words to think about, because this isn't about all of us passing some kind of exam or ticking enough boxes, or being proficient at 12 different things, because there are 12 commitments bound up in this. But with God's help, as far as we are able, and today's commitments are, we care for ourselves and those around us. We learn more about our faith. We practice hospitality and generosity. On the last video, as I introduced worship, I spent some time with each of those commitments that are part of, of, of that, 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 that focus in worship. But I'm not going to do that today. We're going to spend some time with Mary and Martha and with Jesus in their home. When we read the story, Immediately, there's the obvious theme of, of, of being and doing. Hmm? A familiar theme, being and doing. As though there's real distance between these things. Our simple conclusion, reading the story, is that Jesus says to Martha, doing is better than, I mean, being is better than doing, Martha. Hmm? You're, you're so busy, and, and Mary's drawn aside to, to get in touch and to, to be centered in herself. Um, well, that's not true, even most of the time. Being is not necessarily better than doing. We, we find meaning and identity as human beings. We find belonging and, and the sense that we're walking on in our lives in many things, in relationships, in tasks, in activities, in drawing aside from daily life and getting stuck in to, to all the things that are part of our daily life. We find meaning and identity in kindness, sometimes kindness to people we hardly know, people we will never meet sometimes because that's offered to us. Or we think this is a story about, about Martha missing out, not so much on the being moment, but on, on the teaching. Of course, Jesus is, is delivering his best material, and, and Martha is, is distracted by the dishes and the floor and the napkins, or whatever we want to imagine would be part of 
a hosting scenario. And and she's missing out on, on the nuggets, on the, the the explanations, on the yeah, on the material that Jesus is bringing in his teaching. Well, I guess we can maybe assume what kind of conversation they're having, but we just need to know that we're doing that, and it might not have been that kind of moment at all. So it's not that Martha's missing out on an intellectual opportunity to understand her faith better, or to to understand God better, or she's just busy. And somehow that's not the right choice in this moment. And perhaps more than anything, this is a story about the importance of choosing and learning to choose what matters most and learning to do that better and better. Choosing is something we do all the time and learning and caring are things that we do. They're all practices within a growing faith and a healthy church where we're all making choices all the time. Will it always be important to care for ourselves and for those around us? Will it always be, will there always be more to learn about our faith? Will it always be good a good thing to practice hospitality and generosity? I think the answer we know is yes to all of those. Not always all the time for each of them, but consistently, creatively, and by choice, not by accident, although that happens too. So today, as we think about learning and caring, I don't want to spend much time talking about what they mean, but I want to say something this morning, this, today, about, about courage. About courage. In our church, um, we've had for some weeks now um, some sheets up with each of these commitments on them, and we've asked people for a long time, if you've watched the other videos, you'll know this, to, to think about which of these, which of these commitments, um, stations on a map, um, on like a tube map, wh which of them feels like home, and which of them is most frightening, and which one they're most curious about. It was notable that the stickers have, have gone up slowly. People have been hesitant to actually place themselves into these practices. And I wonder why that is. I've noticed that and I've wondered why. I don't think it's because there's lack of interest. It's not that our congregation that people aren't interested in this exercise or curious about what it means. Is it about a perceived lack of privacy? The, the map on the floor is large and the, the sheets are on the wall and it's in a very public place. It's in the main sort of hub that, that our church revolves around where the entrance is and we move between bits of the building. Um, have people been hesitant because they've not wanted others to see where they put their stickers? I'm not sure. For some, I think it's been a lack of confidence. Not really sure that they belong in any of those places, possibly because they think, I'm not brilliant at it. I'm not, you know, I'm not effortlessly at home in any place, which is not the point of the exercise at all. It's as much about desire and longing as it is about, as it is about competence. And sometimes, maybe, our, our hesitance to do things like stick a sticker on a chart on a, on a sheet that that says we learn more about our faith is something that I, I hold precious and dear is because it, it, sometimes it takes courage to name these things especially when the question is what do I fear which of these commitments frightens me the most which scares me sometimes We'd rather not name those things because when we name them, when we put a sticker on the sheet, they become more real, they become more concrete, and we can't avoid them quite so much. See, the whole of this way of life that we're exploring, it means being open to what we do not know, to what we have not experienced. It means asking questions. It means admitting what might seem to ourselves like ignorance. What do these words mean? What on earth is the passage in the Bible? What is this about? I should know this by now. Everyone else seems to know this by now. We sing hymns with, with, with strange, uh, you know, archaic language in them, and we look around, some of us thinking, everyone else seems to be sure that they know what this means, but I don't have a clue. Learning and caring is about what we are not yet and what we can't yet. Probably just as much, if not more, than they are about what we can and what we do know. Every one of the way of life commitments can be phrased as a question 
when they're shaped by our curiosity, by our desire, um, or by our fear or sense of inadequacy. What does it mean to practice hospitality? How do I learn more about the Bible? Who can help me to learn more about how to share my faith with others? What if I'm not at all good at being generous? These are real questions. And if these commitments, which seem like statements that we must uphold and adhere to, if if they can be phrased as questions where we engage with the places we're not sure about them really, where the courage is needed, that might be a, a really helpful thing. And, and just the fact of turning them into questions takes courage. It's much easier and less exposing, it's less risky to, to stay in the place we know with the words we can fit easily to ourselves. Even then, very few of us seem to feel confident about where we are at home at the moment in our church's life. Yesterday there was a little explosion of stickers on, uh, on the charts. Maybe because I said these things in church yesterday as well. But there's still less than a third of those who are regularly part of our life who've even said where home might be. And maybe it takes some courage to feel confident about where we are at home. When we talk about caring for ourselves and others, when we talk about practicing hospitality and generosity, inherently those things mean risking ourselves. Risking our personal space, risking what we have, what we know, and the limits of all those things. Caring for ourselves can mean learning to say no, which for some people is an enormous risk to take, because they like to say yes. Saying yes is part of what helps them know that they belong. It's part of the, the currency even of their place in the church's life or in the community's life. But for some people learning to say no is a very courageous thing. Generous and hospitable caring for others can, can mean learning to say yes. Yes to experiences or, or the sharing of things that we're not sure we know what to do with or, or maybe new experiences for us and so we we feel exposed by them in our church's life learning and caring certainly does mean learning to say I'm sorry I can't remember your name again and again and again because we are a large congregation full of people who forget each other's names and somehow the reticence to ask gets in the way of us continuing where we got to the last time we spoke and I see people dancing around each other, <laughs> unsure of, of how to proceed because, because they're desperately trying to remember the name. And yet when I ask, would anyone be offended if someone came and said to you, I'm sorry, I just can't remember your name. We were having a great chat and um, no, no one has ever said that they would be offended by that. Someone in our congregation told me last week that someone had turned to them and said, are you new here? Have you been before? And they'd been coming to our church for several decades. They weren't offended. It was an opportunity to say hello. And someone had taken the chance of saying, I don't know you. Are you new here? I haven't seen you before. I haven't noticed you before. And a door opened and something happened. Now that might not feel massively courageous for some of you who are watching, or for some of us, but, but for others it is. It's a, it requires courage. It requires choosing. Back to that word. These commitments can seem like duties, they can seem like responsibilities or just the practical outworking of our faith, um, things we must do, but they're all about encounter. And that is perhaps what Martha misses in the story in Luke. It's not that she does the wrong thing, it's that what she chooses gets in the way of encounter. Hmm? And not encounter with the intellectual rigor of Jesus as he teaches, um, not that necessarily, not encounter with, with what it means to stop and to to ground ourselves in our being r r rather than, than cracking on with the jobs and our doing. She, whatever's going on, she seems to, to miss the encounter. Because encounter, when we, when we genuinely encounter ourselves or another person or God su surprisingly in the midst of our lives, often with another person in conversation or in some moment, then the words that Jesus says begin to make sense. Not that just that Mary's chosen what's better, but that nothing can take this away from her. 
because those encounters endure they shape us they frame us they they become solid places to stand in our in our reflecting on life in our going forward in our facing moments where we must be courageous again there are ways of reading the voice of jesus in that story where he's he's harsh and frustrated with martha but i prefer because i see that in him in so many other places prefer to to be prefer him to be inviting her into an encounter even in this moment where he's he's asking her to think about her her, her better choosing next time encounter doesn't just mean sitting and listening either in another version of the story she may have gone to Jesus and said here's a tea towel you want to come and help some courage required in that or Jesus might have come to her and said Martha I see you've got a lot on can, can I help you wash the dishes and she would have struggled as every host does sometimes when the guest says can I help to say yeah of course but it might just have been that alongside each other washing the dishes the encounter would have happened in whatever Martha needed that could not be taken away from her so we can imagine the story differently because it is about encounter see in all of these commitments we're, we're having a go at, at refining what it means to notice God to find God having a go at seeking God in scripture in the world in ourselves in our community um, and learning to make choices that nurture the experience of that or the possibility of that that's what we're doing when we think about when we when we when we have a go at when we embrace these practices so in our church the stickers are a start we have little exploring cards as well that are a start um, ways of finding finding a way in to to exploring some of these things the kind of conversations we have over coffee and before and after the service and in other moments in our church's life they are a start they are moments for choosing moments for courage moments for moments for encounter that sometimes just happens because it happens but usually happens because we choose to open up a space that makes that possible and the last thing I want to say about this is yesterday um, it was the London Marathon and our next door neighbor was running he ran rather fast I'll have a chat to him when he gets back but it was the London Marathon yesterday and and every year when that marathon takes place and I'll watch bits of it I'm always moved sometimes to tears by the stories people tell of why they're there because they're there because of courage and they're there because of learning and caring they're there because they, they care and their care has been birthed out of sadness or devastation in their own lives or the life of someone they know they want to help they're raising money they're learning about the limits of their bodies and, and the reserves as well that we don't know we have until we require them and we find them they're learning about what it means to choose to embrace pain as part of doing something meaningful and good running a marathon is a very courageous thing to do especially the first time And there's something when you choose to run a marathon about being willing to suffer for something you care about. Something life has taught you that you want to, to have the courage to face for yourself or help others to face in some way. So I take my hat off to everyone who ran or walked or hobbled their way around the London Marathon yesterday or did so in a wheelchair or in some other in some other way that uh, was about their their disability see embracing pain which is the cost of loving and loving greatly is part of the courage of learning and caring it always will be learning and caring are not about about skills and intellectual ability they are fundamentally about being human in the company of others with curiosity and with wonder and with questions and with a, a willingness to, to go past the things that embarrass us or that we're ashamed about or that we think we should know by now and discovering in the encounter the more to receive and to give and maybe it's the courage to be willing to suffer to embrace pain to face our pain in all the things we should be learning 
and the ways in which we are growing into caring that holds us back the most. And so I want to finish with a piece, uh, a short piece that I, I was introduced to just this last week, which I'm very grateful to have heard and now have to share with you. Um, a little piece from a book by Brene Brown called Daring Greatly. She wrote this. If you're brave enough to love people, you're going to get your heart broken. If you're courageous enough to care about something, you're going to be disappointed. If you're creative enough and innovative enough to try new things, you are going to fail. So the bravest among us are always the brokenhearted because they took a chance. Our lives are busy. We read the Mary and Martha story and we think it's about the busyness when it's not. It's about the encounter and what makes the encounter possible. And the encounter can be in the busyness just as much as out of it. So the story is a set of signposts for us, not a prescription. And I want to ask you today what you don't know and how you are learning to care and what you're curious about when it comes to to having faith and living out faith and, and where the limits are, where the boundaries are for you at the moment when it comes to hospitality and generosity. Who are those around you that you want to care for, that you need to care for, that you need to want to care for? <laughs> Because sometimes the people around us aren't people where that caring comes easily or naturally. All of this, all of this is shaped by choice. And all of that is in many ways defined by courage. And so as we continue exploring all of these practices, may we choose to have the courage to give them a go. Not to get them right, but to give them a go. Because they are all part of what it means for us to be following in the footsteps of Jesus, who knows what it is, knows what it is to feel pain because of love, and who knows what it is to be encountering people, God himself, in every part of his life. So why should we expect that our, our Jesus following should be any different? Bless you as you travel on however slowly or however fast and maybe whatever struck you most today you want to just sit and spend some time with. The practices are invitations. Courage and choice are what open them up to us. And so God bless you as you, as you seek to do that today and in the days ahead.